My name is Dina Cataldo and I am the owner of Sicilian Tea Company. Tonight we are going to talk about getting curious and it's about getting curious about what's going on in our lives. How are we feeling? All right. And you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with tea? What it has to do with is us getting ready for the 21 day tea ritual challenge that is starting this September 1st. So what is the 21 day tea ritual challenge? It is about finding time to connect with yourself, finding time to finally unplug and to start recognizing what's going on in your life. Instead of go, 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 taking time, just five, 10 minutes a day to be with yourself and figure out what you want, how you feel and decide whether or not you want to make space in your life for change. Now, the 21 Day Tea Ritual Challenge is absolutely free, and you can sign up for it at the post, the blog post called Get Curious, and I've linked to that. And I also want to make sure that you go to the Facebook group because that is going to be the home for 21 Day Tea Ritual Challenge where you can go to seek motivation, where you can go to seek uh, to tell your stories and to tell your wins. It's going to be a safe space. The people who have been coming to the group have been a great group of people, people who over time, I think when you start to talk to them, you're going to feel really good about them. So go ahead and go to the link, sign up for the 21 Day Tea Ritual Challenge, and I'm also going to post a link for the free Facebook group. It's a closed group, and come on by. So today we're going to talk about getting curious. We're going to talk about six guide posts and questions that you can use to kind of feel out where you are right now, what you're feeling, and whether or not there are areas in your life where you want to make change. And I want to set some expectations here first. So first off, I just want you to know that this is, these are guide posts, all right? This just scratches the surface of where you can go. And it's a way for you to just start thinking about these areas. It's not a space where you need to start taking action right away. I want to start as a baby step. I want you to know that there are um, lots of things that you can look at. And if you haven't done this kind of work before, it can be a bit uh, uncomfortable because you're dealing with a lot of things you might not have dealt with before. And that gets me to another point, which is this is gonna be easier for some of us than others. If you grew up in a household where you talked about emotions and you were very open and honest about your feelings, then maybe this will be easier for you. If you grew up in a household like I did, where emotions weren't really talked about, and if you felt sadness, you were Told not to feel it <laughs> and that those feelings were bad, then you may have a little bit more of a difficult time going through some of these processes, but it's worth it. Just trust the process and ask yourself these questions. Make the time to do the work, all right? So uh, also, this is really a practice for anyone who does it. I mean, it doesn't matter how comfortable you feel talking about these things. It is a practice. It is not a set it and forget it kind of thing. You actually have to think about this stuff consciously and it is work. It is not simple. Um, even though it seems like it should be easy once we get all of the pieces together, but it is work. Um, and I want to make sure that you know that this is not about judging yourself. There is a big difference between noticing when you go through these guideposts that there's something that you would like to do differently in your life and judging yourself for what you are doing. So for instance, if you notice something in one of these guideposts and you realize you're doing it, it's kinder to yourself to start saying things like, wow, that's interesting. I wonder why I do that. Be curious about it, right? It's much kinder to be curious about it and have that attitude rather than uh, say to yourself, God, I, I can't believe I do that. What's wrong with me? And there's a very big difference in how we talk to ourselves when we're talking about these 
these guideposts, when we're talking about these feelings that might come up when we're noticing different things happening in our lives. So I've broken down these guideposts into physical and also emotional uh, areas. And I want to start with the physical first because we may not realize just how much of the emotional aspect of these is being held in our body. Sometimes our body is actually the key to figuring out that there's something else going on too. So for instance, I came to yoga after I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I went to yoga kind of looking at it as a medicine as in, okay, well, this is going to be the thing I do that's different that's going to fix me, all right? Rather than understanding that uh, my body is also the key to unlocking things that are going on mentally, emotionally. So when you are learning about breath and when you're learning about movement, you're also unlocking a lot of the areas that are holding on to this emotion. And whether or not you believe or think that that is woo-woo, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I walked into it thinking it was totally woo-woo and that this is just kind of like mysticism. But the more I did it, the more I started understanding, even from like a scientific aspect and reading some of that literature, that it really does have an effect and it really does reflect our emotions. Our physical presence really reflects what we're feeling, what our emotions are. So let's start with the first guidepost and that is our breath. Okay. When you may not notice this, and sometimes I don't even notice it, I will be working and I will notice that I'm holding my breath. I've just stopped breathing. Or I notice that I have a choppy breath. It's uneven. It's at those moments when I just stop and I take a deep breath in. I hold it at the top and then I let it go. And instantly it's like a little reset. Then I just take a few breaths in and out, slow, deep breaths, and it resets what's going on in my breath. And I feel instantly more relaxed. What you, you may or may not be able to associate an emotion that has caused your breath to be choppy. That's okay. You may not notice what is happening at that moment that that seems to be affecting your breath, that's okay. What's important is just to notice that your breath is choppy, that your breath is even, that you're holding your breath. And then over time, notice when you're doing it. Are you doing it when you are talking to a particular person that you've had conflict with? Are you doing it when you're working on something that you don't like? Um, it's just, it kind of, depends on the situation and you don't really know what's happening until you've observed it over time. That's why this is a no pressure practice. This is a non-judgment practice. It's all about just noticing what's going on in your life because that's the only way you can make positive change is by actually noticing what's happening right now. The second guidepost I want to talk to you about is your physical body. Now your, your body is holding tension in different areas. One of the most common places people hold tension, and for me this is a big one, is in my shoulders. I notice that I feel really tense, I feel really tight, um, my jaw gets really tight, or I furrow my brow. Um, there are times when I feel really constricted, and I don't always know why. And usually the breath and the body are linked, so if my body is tense, chances are my breath is choppy or I'm holding my breath. So those things are linked together. And then it's just a matter of noticing that it's happening, taking a deep breath in, holding it at the top, and then releasing it. And then I can feel more relaxed. I feel more grounded. And then I can start reflecting on, okay, what is causing this? Why do I feel this way? Am I feeling this way because I'm thinking about a particular issue in my life? Like what is happening where my body is starting to constrict? What is happening where my breath is becoming choppy? So just start noticing these things. So let's move on to some emotions that you might come into contact with every day. So um, one emotion that you may be familiar with is anger. And 
anger can come up in a lot of different ways, so I'm not even going to try to touch that today. But what I would like you to do, what the invitation is, is to notice when you become angry and to start to recognize what are your triggers. Now, there are times when you might become angry at someone or you might direct anger at somebody, but you're not really angry at them. Okay, there are times when you are angry with that one, that person, but you may be angry at something else. You may be angry at yourself. You may be angry about um, something that you have done, some guilt, some shame going on in you, and you are taking it out on somebody else who maybe is less powerful or you feel like they deserve the anger that's directed at them. And the important thing right now is just to notice what's happening. You don't have to reach the source of what's going on right now. Just notice when you lash out, when you react. And when you do react, you may not notice that you reacted until much later, and then you can think back on it and think, okay, now, why did I do that? Why did I behave that way? And rather than blaming yourself or feeling bad, like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I'm, I'm horrible. Rather than doing that, think to yourself, I'm curious, why did I do that? I'm, I don't, I wonder why I did that. And then you can start thinking through and working through what might have been the source of that anger. And if you're really good, if you've, you've kind of gotten a little bit ahead of the game here, then you may recognize when you are about to lash out, when you're about to be angry, and you can take a moment and take a breath and then decide what you're going to do, whether or not you're going to react or how you're going to react. Are you going to react with anger or are you going to react in a different way that's maybe a little more measured? So at this point, it's just about recognizing what's going on. And then later on, we'll talk about, not today, in another, another show, we'll talk about getting a little bit closer to the reasons why those things are happening or the reasons why we are reacting the way we are reacting. Now, the fourth guidepost I'd like to talk to you about is numbing out. Are you numbing out? There are so many ways we can numb out. And I can tell you my favorite. My favorite is candy, eating generally, uh, sleeping. Uh, I love to binge watch television. Those are, I think those are my favorite ways of numbing out. Also work. I use work as a way of numbing out. There's something about staying busy. You can avoid all kinds of emotions if you stay busy and you're always doing something. Now, there are lots of other ways. Uh, we, can, we can pretend that it's really productive to be busy all the time, right? We can say, oh, well, I got so much done today. But did you sit back and did you really reflect on how you're being in the world? Uh, I know I don't always do that, although I aspire to, to do that. And there are other ways that maybe we might look at as less productive, but they are still forms of numbing out. Drinking, gambling, uh, those kinds of things where, um, gosh, I have a list here. The internet, obsessively cleaning. Uh, also, I've seen people use exercise as a way of numbing out. It's that constant activity. Now, exercising is healthy, right? But if we overdo it, that's numbing out. There are things that we can look at as productive numbing out and we can justify that behavior. Or maybe there are ways that are not as productive, quote unquote, productive. So just notice what's going on. Are you numbing out? Are you taking time every day to just kind of reflect on how you are in the world? Or are you deciding, and hey, no judgment here, you're just being curious, are you binge watching Game of Thrones because you were trying to avoid something, something you're thinking about. Maybe you're procrastinating on a big project that you need to do. There's all kinds of reasons why you could be numbing out, right? So get curious about it. The fifth guidepost that I want to tell you about is thinking about things over and over and over again. There are a couple ways that this shows up a lot, right? So one of them is, is maybe we had a conversation with a loved one or a coworker and we repeat it over and over and over and over again. And the more we repeat it, the more we get worked up. The more we start to become angry, maybe the more tense we become, maybe the more we hold our breath. So they're all kind of linked, right? All these guideposts are kind of linked. 
there is another way that shows up a lot, which is thinking to the future, telling off that person that we think deserves being told off, and we really get that dig in that they deserve, right? And we think about how best we're going to tell that person off, and we think that one over and over again, and we rehearse it. Both of those things that seem to show up a lot in this area take a lot of energy and they work us up in a way that's negative rather than focusing on ways that our life could be better. So when we're instead of focusing on all of this negativity, there are other places we could be spending our energy that we're not. So let's start first by the noticing, right? So first just notice, are you repeating these thoughts over and over again? And then when you notice it, you can stop and take a breath and you can switch gears. A couple ways you can do that. If you're, if you're easy, easily able to do this, you could just switch gears and start thinking about something else. Or you can use something like um, a gratitude practice where you think of something that makes you happy. And it could be something as simple as the breeze running through the trees. It could be something simple like that. Something to take your mind away from the negativity that's going on because those things that we're thinking about over and over again are draining us. So something to think about, something to get curious about. The sixth guidepost I wanna to talk to you about is complaints. Ask yourself if you are complaining. I am a, I'm really guilty of this a lot and I, I do notice it and when I notice it, I have to catch myself. It's so easy to do and when I do it, I notice that my whole mentality, my whole state changes. It's just a little bit of a negative shift and it does not feel good. I have to recognize it. And um, when I notice a complaint is coming up, I take a deep breath and I start moving my thoughts in a different direction. Just like when I have those repetitive thoughts, I take a breath and then I, I try to be grateful for something. And if I'm really good, I could be grateful for something that in that difficult situation that I'm thinking of that I want to complain about so badly, that is the next step, right? It's just, okay, recognizing I'm complaining. Why am I complaining? And you can start recognizing those different patterns in your behavior and start to make shifts. So that is our the sixth guideposts that I have for you tonight. So now I want to hear from you. Is there a guidepost that you look to when you know that there's something off, like you're not in alignment with yourself? Something that helps you get grounded when you recognize it. If you have something like that and it's not one of the six guideposts, or even if it is one of the six guideposts, I want to hear from you. Comment below and let me know what it is. And I also want you to do two things. If you liked this video, please like it. And then I'd like you to go to the link, Get Curious, because there you're going to find links to the 21-Day Tea Ritual Challenge, which is totally free, starting September 1st. And you are also going to have links to the Facebook group that's closed. I want you to have these resources, because this is going to be something that will shift your perspective. Just take this time to yourself, unplug for 21 days, and you're really gonna notice a shift. You're gonna have increased positivity, you're gonna have more energy, and you're gonna start noticing things in your life that you may not have noticed before, and they're gonna start showing up every day. So I really hope that you join us on September 1st for the challenge, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks so much for being here.